Hi, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is July 4th. It's Friday. Happy Independence Day to everyone out there. Happy July 4th. Uh, we have lots of activities going on all around the country today. Our eyes are focused on this brief update for this developing tropical system off the southeast coast of the United States. We've been talking about this for the last several days, and the National Hurricane Center uh, has uh, seen that it has taken on a little bit more organization and tasked a U.S. Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter uh, from the 53rd Weather Squadron uh, to investigate this system, and they are flying through it right now. As a matter of fact, uh, look at the high-resolution GOES satellite imagery. You can see what's going on. It does have uh, some uh, more organization to it. This is what we're looking at right here, and this is the system. Notice it's uh, far enough off the coast here from like Jacksonville and the Space Coast uh, that it's really not causing much in the way of cloudiness and or showers or storms, uh, but it is uh, kicking up some wind and some waves. Uh, there is a rip current uh, threat all along the Florida East Coast up through Georgia and up through South Carolina and there into North Carolina as well. This is what we're concerned about. Uh, we're concerned about this just sitting and spinning for the next couple of days, and it is over the Gulf Stream. Water temperatures are plenty warm. Let me switch over here to the sea surface temperature data, and you can see what it looks like. So it's uh, very warm under there, oranges and uh, uh, bright yellows and maybe some uh, darker oranges. Uh, that's temperatures in the 80s, and uh, that's all you need to uh, develop and sustain a tropical system. Temperatures above 79 degrees uh, for that sea surface temperature data. So this is the area that we're concerned about. It's the whole area up and down the coastline here from the Outer Banks all the way down to uh, Florida here. Uh, that is where we'll have an enhanced uh, rip current uh, chance and also... Uh, must say that anybody going to the beach, please do not swim, do not get into the water above your ankles if there's no lifeguard there. Because if you go out and float around, try to ride some waves in, you may get caught in a rip current. And if there are no lifeguards around there, um, it may be very difficult to pull you back in. Of course, if you do get caught in a rip current, uh, you should swim parallel to the coastline. So swim away uh, from that rip current area, if you're not able to swim back in, swim parallel until you're out of that rip current, and then you can swim back in. But it's very obvious when you're in one, it wants to take you out. And if you swim towards the shore, you're not getting anywhere, and it can be very, very tiring. So this is what it looks like from the satellite vantage point. I'm going to go a little bit closer in here and dive in uh, closer so we can see the one-minute satellite imagery from... Uh, this uh, system. It's not really named yet. 92L is the invest uh, number. Uh, that means the model data can focus in on it and uh, run model runs over it. Uh, you can see, though, what this looks like. And boy, this area here, I believe this is close to the center. Look at this area in here. These are a lot of bubbles that are coming up. This is strong thunderstorm activity that is developing uh, I, I think it's slightly east of the center of the storm, uh, and there is uh, not much in the way of cloudiness and or wind uh, or storms to the west of the storm. So we have a ways to go as this system continues to develop, it may develop slowly, may become a tropical depression and nothing more. Uh, if it stays in the same place over the next day or two, uh, it could become a tropical storm as this thunderstorm activity, if it does organize around the center, uh, does give it a little bit more oomph. You do have circulations at different levels of the atmosphere. The low-level circulation at the surface is not quite lined up with the mid-level and upper-level circulation of this storm, and so that makes it very difficult to strengthen. We may see some flare-up of thunderstorms, things like that, but until those thunderstorms start to encircle uh, the center of that low pressure system, it's not going to intensify. But needless to say, it is showing uh, some uh, some respectable thunderstorms there that have been developing over the last uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And this is here at 225 Eastern Time. I'm going to add um, a little bit of enhancement here onto this uh, imagery. 
There we go. This is uh, enhancement. Uh, I've added another uh, an infrared channel to overlay with the visible channel, and that's where we can watch these reds and oranges. This is an area where we're seeing thunderstorm activity uh, really blossom. Now, the big question is, will it maintain that, and how will it develop over the course of the next 12 hours or so uh, and uh, see if it gives this storm a little bit more organization? Uh, but I'm going to go full screen with this and show you what it looks like here, and it is pretty uh, impressive. It spun up, uh, and it showed a pretty rapid, not, not rapid development, but pretty um, quick organization, I should say. Once the low pressure moved off the coast of Florida and into the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean there, we're starting to see more in the way of organization. I'll back out a little bit more uh, so you can see what it looks like here. This is uh, the area that is rotating, uh, maybe a surface circulation. It kind of looks like it from the clouds, uh, the low level clouds here. And I'll go back to the uh, really close in uh, data because uh, I'll move it over here to the, to the west just a little bit. You can see here's Brunswick, Georgia. Here's Jacksonville, Florida right here. Look at those low level cumulus clouds. And you can see the low level winds coming in off of the ocean. So the low pressure system as these uh, cumulus clouds uh, rotate around this system are kicking off little showers and storms. It's well offshore, so you don't have to worry about it right now. But you can see the surface cumulus fields are taking on an onshore look. And as a matter of fact, if we get up here towards here's Charleston, South Carolina, and you can see these upper level clouds, these cirrus clouds here, they're moving, they're moving in a anticyclonic direction. See this? These high level clouds are moving this way. The low level clouds, the cumulus clouds are moving this way. So this is showing that we have a high pressure system above this, which is giving it the chance for outflow. Uh, which tells me that we could be looking at a strengthening system here, uh, at least getting a little bit more organized. And let's move a little bit further north because I want to show you too up towards Myrtle Beach and uh, those areas. Here's Myrtle Beach. Sunny skies right now, uh, beautiful weather, the sea breeze. Looks like these clouds are inland. Uh, so we do have some offshore storms, but we can take a look. Uh, let's take a look uh, live. Here is Myrtle Beach, 228 this afternoon, and you can see the flags. The flags are blowing inland, so we have that wind coming in uh, from that circulation. And you can see off there in the distance, uh, these are cumulus clouds out here. Maybe some little uh, uh, trying to be some showers uh, that are forming. And if we go back, uh, to that satellite loop, we can show you. Here's Myrtle Beach. Here's those clouds uh, out off the coast here. And then we can see them uh, with the live picture. So this is what it looks like here at Myrtle Beach. There are those clouds. They're developing high, thin clouds. That's from the low pressure system off the coast, about 100, 150 miles off the coast right now. But a gorgeous day in Myrtle Beach. Look at this. You can see the wind. The flags are blowing. The wind is blowing inland. Uh, so that means that we are having influence from that system uh, that's off the coast. And the waves here, it looks like they're kicking up some uh, white water here. The beach is really crowded. Um, so uh, just make sure uh, you go in that water near a lifeguard because I'm sure that there are rip current threats all up and down the South Carolina coastline uh, during the day uh, today. So I'll go back to that uh, satellite picture here and we'll move up the coast just to see uh, what it looks like and where uh, more um, where where we might see some more uh, issues uh, from Wilmington to Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, to the Outer Banks, Cape Hatteras, and up towards Kitty Hawk and Duck. Uh, we may see uh, increases in rip currents as well as this system uh, gets a little bit more wrapped up over the next 24 hours or so. And uh, we can see here, these are cirrus clouds that are moving up this way. Uh, that shows that there is a high pressure system over this low uh, that is really uh, forcing some of these clouds to evacuate uh, where this low pressure system is and, and trying to develop. So uh, I'll move back down here. This is the one minute satellite imagery. So it's a limited sector. I can't go all the way up the coast here, but I can with the other one. 
But you can see on the outer bands here uh, that are trying to form, we do have thunderstorms. Uh, so this, uh, to me, tells me that this system is intensifying. And uh, it looks like it won't have a big impact for you folks in eastern Florida with wind and rain. Um, maybe some residual uh, rain when it uh, strengthens. But this system is slowly going to be moving to the northwest. Uh, and it is forecast right now uh, to come ashore somewhere between North and South Carolina border. Uh, it's really too early to tell because there's no distinct center. Until we get that center and then we can model it accurately, then we'll be able to tell uh, where it might be uh, moving here in the future. But let's widen out again and I'll show you what's going on. Uh, this is uh, the, the low pressure system. 92L is the invest uh, and that is how the... Uh, the plane is identifying it as it flies through. As a matter of fact, let me show you what it looks like from the vantage point of uh, the, uh, the aircraft recon flight. So here we go. This is what happens when the aircraft flies through the storm or flies through the invest area. It's not really a storm yet. It uh, drops these drop sons and we can see what the flight level winds are and the winds going down to the surface. And they're not very impressive right now. All of these winds where this was flying uh, was to from the north uh, and northeast at about 15 knots. So not really uh, too impressive. There's the plane right there as it drops the, the sons there. Uh, so um, I'm thinking that uh, they're not really going to find a whole heck of a lot with any strong gusty winds. Um, but uh, the satellite picture does tell a very interesting story of it potentially increasing um, in organization. Let's go over to GeoCollaborate here for a second because I want to show you the National Hurricane Center has upped the chances, the probabilities that this is going to develop into a tropical system to 70%. And you can see now the probability over a two-day period is 70%. And over that seven day period is 70%. So, and it's very narrow here, it's very small. So this is where we're looking for this uh, potential tropical depression uh, to form. And that's why you see these uh, green areas here, the National Weather Service uh, Weather Prediction Center, their excessive rainfall outlook over the next three days has North Carolina and South Carolina in this area of potential uh, excessive rainfall that could cause local flooding. So be aware of that. Everybody is at the beach pretty much for the 4th of July weekend that's going to be there uh, for today and into tomorrow and Sunday. So we may have coastal storms and heavy rain, could be intense at times, uh, dropping uh, this, uh, this intensity of one to two inches per hour causing localized flooding. Also down in Florida, most of the Florida Peninsula uh, will be um, open to showers and thunderstorms, and some of those storms could be intense at times, dropping localized rainfall, perhaps in the Orlando area, towards the Space Coast, down towards Miami, uh, where you could see rainfall rates of one to two inches per hour, which could cause localized flooding. That also goes for Tampa and Clearwater and down towards Sarasota and Bradenton, uh, Naples, Fort Myers, those areas could see scattered showers and storms as well. As this system gets more organized, we'll see more of a precipitation field uh, come together. And I can turn off uh, the National Hurricane Center's outlook here uh, just to show you uh, what it looks like from the standpoint of uh, uh, turning off the, the uh, graphical outlook so you can see the radar data. And you can see there are showers and storms out here. Uh, no real organization yet. Uh, but again, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll do another update to show you what's going on. Uh, but we may be talking about excessive rainfall here, North Carolina, South Carolina, as this drifts to the north and uh, perhaps comes inland somewhat over North Carolina as it gets a little bit more organized. Uh, we do have buoys out here in the ocean. I can turn on uh, those uh, ocean uh, buoys to show you some of those observations. Not really um, too much in the way of strong winds, but there we go. There's some buoys, and we can zoom in here, and I'll, I'll just query a couple of them so you can see that we can look at the real-time data 
Here's a buoy right here, station 41004. Winds are east at uh, 15 and a half knots, gusting to 19 knots. Uh, that is well below a tropical storm force, a tropical storm, 35 knots. Uh, look at the significant wave height, 3.6 feet. Uh, that's uh, not too bad uh, as well. We'll see this uh, change as this system uh, gets a little bit more organized. Look at the um, air temperature out there, 81.3 degrees. Uh, dew point is pretty high. It tells me there's a lot of tropical moisture out here for this system to feed upon. How about down off the coast of Georgia? This is 41008, this buoy. Uh, and it looks like the significant wave height is three feet. Uh, winds at 11 knots, gusting to 13 knots, a north-northeast wind. So that shows between this buoy and the one that we just looked at, uh, we're talking about a, a circulation uh, around here like this. But out here, let's see what this buoy says uh, here. This is 41.002, northeast wind, a northeast wind coming here at 9 knots, almost 10 knots, gusting to 11 so the winds are not impressive at the surface here, and that uh, looks like what the uh, Air Force Hurricane Reconnaissance uh, mission uh, is determining as well. Uh, but the radar imagery uh, shows a little bit of uh, banding perhaps uh, to the north, and the satellite imagery, that's what is looking like a little bit more uh, impressive to me as we go back to that. And you can see that little blob here uh, that's... that's um, coming together. Uh, we'll just need this to get stacked together uh, from the low levels to the mid levels to the high levels for it to do any sort of intensification. We'll be watching it uh, for you 24-7 uh, 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 and we'll be back tomorrow with another update. Uh, impacts to critical infrastructure just looks like any heavy showers or storms uh, that develop along the coastline uh, could create uh, that area of uh, localized flooding um, and then we'll have strong rip currents uh, because this system will be kicking up uh, those waves uh, because of the winds uh, pushing towards the coastline there as well. So um, uh, one other thing I want to show up and down the East Coast here, look at this. It's beautiful from the Outer Banks north up to Virginia Beach, up into the Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, Delaware, up to New Jersey. A beautiful day here, so it doesn't look like we'll have any impacts from this system over this weekend uh, in the uh, Maryland, Delaware area. We'll certainly be giving updates and see if anything happens along towards a Sunday, but into Monday perhaps. Uh, and then uh, we can just take a quick look at the beach uh, there looking east at Bethany Beach uh, in Delaware. Uh, this is what it looks like right now. This is uh, live uh, here at 238. The beaches are packed up and down the east coast and uh, along the Gulf and on the West Coast as well, people really enjoying uh, this uh, 4th of July weekend. Uh, get in a little bit closer here with uh, Bethany Beach. Looks like the waves are just terrific. Not really big, just uh, great to be out there and enjoy them. Again, uh, final piece of advice, if you go out into the ocean, make sure you're swimming near a lifeguard, uh, and those lifeguards are watching out for rip currents. In the Southeast, rip currents are going to be a big threat as this system meanders off the coast for the next couple of days. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Thanks so much for watching this update. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow to give you another update on what this system is doing. Again, 92L is the invest here, and it looks like it's getting a little bit more organized, uh, but still nothing official from the National Hurricane Center. Thanks so much for watching. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. Have a great 4th of July, everybody. See you tomorrow.